Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Today I'm going to uh, show you one way or a way in which I'm going to perhaps maybe paint some bookmarks. Um, autumn is here and it's time to think about it, I suppose. Christmas, you know, that thing just around the corner. Um, first thing to decide is your uh, colours that you're going to use, of course. And for an autumn look, obviously, you want some warm reds and things. But uh, always best to limit your um, palette, the choice of colours that you're using, to a restricted number. Otherwise, it starts to look a bit chaotic. You can make it work, but it's harder. So what I've done here, I've mixed up a little combination here of, this is the Kuretake set I've got here, um, but any set of paints would do um, because most of them will have these kinds of colors in. You could use burnt sienna um, with a little bit of um, green in it to make it not quite so vivid. I've actually used English red, I think it is, yes, or Indian red or Venetian red, any one of those mixed with some orange, or cadmium orange that is, um, to make this colour, which is a sort of lightly opaque, slightly opaque, semi-opaque, brownish red, reddish brown, which uh, looks like that. And I'm also going to use a green here, which is sap green dark mixed with some, um, what did I use? Blue, wasn't it? Yes, indigo. And then this is violet, canacridone, purple, canacridone, violet, whatever, mixed also with some indigo. And the indigo just makes it a little bit more subtle. So those are the colours. Oh, and this is Naples yellow. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I've got a sheet here of A4, that's to say um, roughly letter size, so roughly 10 by 8, uh, 30 by 20, 20 by 30 centimetres, I think, roughly. And I'm going to use my wide ruler just to rule off a bookmark shaped piece of paper. And this is 140 pound Clairefontaine Etival, um, not Montval, Etival, which is a bit better than the uh, Montval. And then I'm going to use a probably a size seven and probably a size three round brush and possibly, depending on how I feel, a bigger round. This is an 11. And they're all by Drawwell. They all come from Japan. So um, the motifs for autumn tend to be um, reddish brown, orange, golden leaves, don't they? And mushrooms and berries and, you know, snails and things like that. So that's what we're going to do. And... The way I want to construct this is the easiest way that I know of, actually, which I've been doing for a little while now, is to start off with the stalks. The stalks of the leaves and just put those in place first and then kind of work round it. So I'm going to plunge into my bluish green. I'm just adding a little bit more of the violet into that to make that a little bit more bluish. And we'll just do some lines which will then carry leaves like that. And you have choice here. You could either wash off your brush and pick up some brown and then drop in, like I am, some stalks for your leaves, your brown leaves. This way you, you can guarantee you've got a reasonable balance, can't you, of um, the two different kinds of colours. So that done, we'll go back to the uh, green and um, I'm just going to place little leaves on the side here. Just 
So we'll do that on each of these stalks. You could use a bigger brush. Sometimes it's easier to paint small. The next one I'll show you with a slightly bigger brush. And see how this goes, whether this is better, easier. It's definitely a looser um, effect, I think, if you use a bigger brush. Feels less finickety, if you know what I mean. When you're doing it with the tiny brush, you think, oh, I must have a tiny brush to uh, do these tiny leaves with. And then you start getting all kind of nye. If you leave um, some little white areas for it to breathe, that doesn't matter. It's probably a good thing, actually. So that's those. And then we'll come in with some some of the orange. And you can choose, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of leaf you do, just so it looks roughly like a leaf. So that's kind of maple leaf type of thing, perhaps. could do beech leaves as well, or instead if you wanted to. So that's the first step. And, you know, the thing is, with something like this, you can do so many different things. And as you go along, you're going to think, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll do it somewhat differently um, to what I had in mind in the first place. On the other hand, you might decide to go ahead and do exactly what you had in mind in the first place. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to put in some mushrooms and because there's not an awful lot of space, these mushrooms are going to have to go kind of overlapping. So we'll see how this works out. So we'll just do a, uh, this is the um, Naples yellow, and we're just painting the cap of the mushroom and a stalk like that. This colour is um, opaque, so if you painted it on thick enough, it would actually go right over whatever's underneath, in theory. Okay, so that's that. And then we need some berries. So we'll use this purple, which I'm going to thicken up a little bit. Let's put little little bunches of berries. Something that happens with small brushes, and I think it's starting to happen with this one, I've used it quite a lot, they start to um, lose their hairs and become a bit erratic, a bit like men really. 
Um, so, yeah, you might have to replace the small ones more often. I'm talking about watercolour brushes here. Yeah, see, this one is not holding a very nice line at all. It's okay, though. It's only a bookmark. And uh, for the leaves, I think we need to come in with a bit more paint. Make them a bit darker, so just let's just drop in. Some more of the colour. And then I'm going to grab my pen, my white pen, and we will put the veins into these green leaves with white. A little highlight on the berries. Maybe on the mushrooms we'll put some lines because you can, amazingly enough, white will go over that Naples yellow. And these green ones too, green, blue. A little white dot on those berries. It just livens everything up. And then we need to do something with these leaves. I think I need some brown pen. So let's put in the veins. Come on, wake up, pen. It's absolutely fatal using a felt tip pen on paint, but what can you do? There we are. And next thing to do, really, is to probably let that dry. Maybe I'll just darken the stems on the mushrooms a little bit. think yeah I think that I'm going to have to do something I very rarely do which is to actually go over with a slightly opaque color the thing I did underneath just because I think it needs to be a little bit more even. And uh, I'm going to blame the paper for this, but no, actually, I'm not going to blame anything because this is the first time I've used these Kiritaki paints on this particular paper. And uh, maybe the French and the Japanese don't get on. I don't know, we'll have to try it again. Never say never, let it dry and see what we have at the end. I'm sure it'll be fine.
hunky dok just need to let those dry and uh, maybe I'll put some white lines on them when they are dry. Okay, so that's dry. So now I'm just going to kind of go around the outside edge of these leaves, which are a kind of hybrid of this and that, They're nothing specific. Could, could call them maple, but for the sake of, you know, global unity, we could also call them chestnut or sycamore or I don't know, whatever. I think, isn't sycamore a kind of maple? can't remember. Anyway, back to the subject in hand. We're just going around the outside edge to give them a little bit more shape. And uh, with the white pen, and then we're going to call that done. I think, I think we call that done. Maybe we need one more set of berries or something, but uh, no, I think that's fine. So we'll just uh, cut that off the piece of paper because you can't possibly put two on the same piece of paper, can you? That would be recipe for messy disaster. So there we are, one simple bookmark for the autumn.
Okay, for number three, I think I'm going to start with my pale mushrooms in the background. Sometimes when you do this kind of thing, what will happen is you start off and you do a couple and you think, oh, they're not bad. But then you think, but if I'd have done it a different way, haha, very funny, um, it would have worked out better. So what I'm thinking now is maybe being as the palest colour is this uh, Naples yellow type of colour, which I think they call in this set uh, natural beige, but it, it's the same as Naples yellow, which I'm sure most of you will have. This is the kind of lightest colour, isn't it? So let's see how it goes if we put the mushrooms in as a kind of background. And they're just, you know, the sort of mushrooms that you use to make dinner with. Nothing terribly exciting. One of your shirataki, kirataki mushrooms. Just mushrooms. Okay. And uh, then we will come in on top of that with our leaves. Oh God, it's one o'clock. <laughs> okay, so it's another day, another day, another dollar. And um, so I'm going to carry on with these, uh, this one here, this mushroomy one. And uh, we will start off, oops, with uh, some mushrooms going up the other way. So we'll just do the top part here. So like that, and uh, then maybe we'll pick up a little bit of the beige colour and then just pull down a stalk like that. And then we'll do another one over here. Like that. And Another one here. I'm making this up as I go along, you can tell, can't you? But uh, why not? I'm interested to ask if anyone out there has got the Kuretake set of uh, gem colours and um, opal colours, because those two I haven't got and they get very mixed reviews on Amazon. So I was just wondering what people think about that. If there's anyone out there that's used them. And then I'm going to put some berries. Like that. And my paints have dried up overnight. You can do the stems first if you want. Sometimes I think that might be easier. And then, then put the berries on the stems. I think both ways works. I'm not sure which I prefer. Try the other way. Um, yeah, because I really like the Kuretake 48 pan set and I like the starry colours and I like the graphites, but I'm not quite sure um, about the other two. They get very mixed. Very, very mixed reviews. Okay, so that's that. And then we're going to put some pink, pinkish on the stalks of these mushrooms, which immediately makes the whole top part stand out. And put some lines coming down. And then pick up some more of this red, reddish brown and put in the middle of the mushrooms that are going the other way. I 
that's it. And then I think we'll put, use some pen to make the gills go up. Like that. And we'll put a little highlight on these berries. Like that. And then I think this particular design, I think I'm going to come back in with the pen and uh, do some pen work and I've got a 0 0.05 here, I think. Yeah. So we'll turn this into pen and ink. And that way you can add sort of little grassy bits and pieces, get a bit more character. Don't take any notice of my dogs, they're just playing. Doesn't sound like it, I know, but they are. They're learning to play together. Some few grassy tufts there. I think the black pen is very similar to the white one in as much as if you press too hard, I like the way that stem went nice and fat there, don't you? I think that's really cool. Yeah, if you press too hard, these very uh, small nibs, they tend to give up the ghost. And uh, we can put in some little leaves just to fill in some spaces. And I'll come in with some green in a minute and paint them. Sometimes it's nice to put leaves in pairs. Sometimes you want them on stems. There we are, and I'll just finish that off now with some green. So we kept a really very restricted palette there of uh, Naples yellow, India, Indian red or Venetian red or English red, any one of those semi-opaque red colours, reddish brown, or you could use burnt sienna, that would work too. Uh, all depends what you happen to have. If you don't have any of those reds that I mentioned, then burnt sienna is definitely the one to go for. And um, this was... Um, 
sap green mixed with um, ultramarine. This was uh, Windsor Violet, also mixed with ultramarine. And what did I pick this up for? Oh, yes, I was just going to add a few lines coming down. You could put butterflies and bees in here too. I think that would look quite nice as well. You could do all sorts of things. And now all I need to do is grab my knife and my ruler. I don't know where my metal one has gone, but this one will do. I always keep a couple of rulers on the desk for things like this. So there we are. Three little bookmarks for the autumn. A nice little gift for somebody just need to punch some holes and put some, some attractive thread in through the hole at the bottom. So I hope you enjoyed that. Give us a like and subscribe and I'll see you here again soon. So bye everybody. Bye for now. Bye bye.